Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave and welcome to this next entry within this trade and psychology series. Today, we will be focusing on the three most important beliefs to become a consistently successful professional trader. These are the three most important beliefs that I've found. And here they are. Stoicism, a belief in stoicism essentially. Patience, typically with regards to time, and three, discipline, typically with regards to risk management. So let's go a little bit deeper into this, and let's start off first with perhaps what I believe is the most important thing and what makes everything possible, and that is an overall operating system of stoicism. This is the best philosophical framework to be coming from that I've found. If you're not familiar with Stoicism, it is essentially predominantly a philosophy of personal ethics informed by its system of logic and its views on the natural world. According to its teachings as social beings, the path to happiness for humans is found in accepting the moment as it presents itself, aka living in the present moment and just ex being accepting of that. By not allowing oneself to be controlled by the desire for pleasure or fear of pain, key by using one's mind to understand the world and to do one's part in nature's plan and by working together and treating others fairly and justly. Now, of course, with regards to trading, the most important parts with this are going to be not being driven by desire for pleasure or fear of pain. Because remember, those are emotionally driven decisions which will intrinsically block you from that relaxed state that we want to be coming from to in order to make good, sound, logical decisions. Stoicism is the best operating system that I found for this. Again, if you're not familiar with it, um, a couple books to check out would be Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, like quite literally the emperor of Rome at one point in time. And then also uh, Tim Ferriss, you know, the four week, uh, the four hour work week guy put together uh, a couple of audiobooks called The Tao of Seneca, which are absolutely incredible as well, and I strongly suggest that. In fact, I actually enjoy those a lot more than meditations. Anyways, why is this so powerful and why is this so useful? In understanding that we as human beings are just that human beings and nothing else and our identity can't be tied up with other ephemeral ideas whether it be you know a, a, a winner or a loser or a professional trader or a professional you know i don't know lawyer or, or whatever it is the infinite the infinite combinations of potential identities that your that your mind can come up with which are essentially just illusions from actual reality you can't actually be those things myself i actually don't think of myself as a professional trader even though this is what i do as a living I don't really have any other sources of income or anything like that. I can't see myself as a professional trader because that's not a real thing. I'm just a person. I'm just a human. And what I do can be born from that framework, not driven by those ephemeral ideas of being some sort of, you know, always a winning trader because when we adopt a belief that i'm a winner or i'm a professional trader or you know in some cases i'm a loser which certainly is you know very destructive belief whenever we experience something that goes against that and we will experience stuff that goes against that it will cause an immense amount of dissonance within the mind causing us to enter into that emotional state which is, again, going to be emotionally driven and likely going to block us from actually making good, sound, logical decisions. So understand that. Understand that any, and, and this this can really become from a lot of different philosophical beliefs. I've just found stoicism to really make a lot of sense to me. Um, but basically that state of enlightenment, that, that state of enlightenment that, that you will not you know, perceive things as neither good nor bad. It's just information. You can see how this works twofold. One, in your actual analysis. Understand this situation. You might be in a very long position. You you, you bought Bitcoin uh, or, or whatever asset. I'm just using the example of Bitcoin. This, this applies to all trading. But you are in a big position, big long position because whatever you know secret sauce indicator you're using what uh you know whatever your edge was gave you a long signal so you entered into it as you know that as your strategy dictates great awesome good now let's say the opposite of that signal occurs so perhaps you know you get you get an incredibly bearish signal like you get a death cross on the daily um which typically has some pretty massive implications now, a lot of people will fight that, that battle in their mind saying, 
well, I'm already in a long position, so I want to reinforce this. I want to live up to that identity. And of course, if you have an identity that, you know, you're also a winner, you want that to work because now you are wrapped up in it, you know, as, as being right as well. So now it's, you know, it's really working against you. And when you get this very bearish sig signal, you won't make that call to get out as, you know, as your strategy likely dictates. So understand these things and understand that we want to simplify as much as possible. We don't want to be fighting in internal battles against ourselves. It's just going to complicate the whole procedure and it's already hard enough. <laughs> so you don't want to make it any harder than, than it has to be. So your identity wants, you want your identity to be independent of your, of your, of your, you know, singular success, you know, like a, just a random example, success or loss, because remember with technical analysis, as far as I know, again, in this year of 2019, I've never met someone who is a perfect trader at having a 100% win rate or a loss rate for that matter. And if we can't live up to that with that sort of knowledge and with my sort of technical analysis strategies, I actually have it built in that I will be taking losses with that, you know, with that truth in mind, it should be soothing. And what, with it being soothing that we can actually do that. We want to be coming from that frame that it can't, you know, if it can't be done, then we want to disassociate from that so it does not affect us emotionally, psychologically, and we can actually, you know, make good logical decisions, which I'm actually, it might sound like I'm actually talking in circles here, but there's points to each and every one of these. So understand this. The worst thing to happen, the absolute worst thing to happen is you identify with being, I mean, the worst thing to happen is, is you identify with being a loser. So it's like you self-sabotage even when you're a winner just to live up to that identity. But let's say you have the identity of being a winning trader. You're a winning professional trader, which again, I don't think of myself as such. I just think of, my, uh, of myself as a person who, who happens to trade for a living. Someone coming from the frame of that as being a winning trader, winning professional trader, they will want to live up to that identity no matter what. That is almost considered a death if they don't. If, well, again, that's just an illusion of the mind, of course, but they will act out and they will fight with reality to make that right. Their internal battle will be doing that which again, just complicates and puts in a virus in the mind. Again, just making it more difficult to get to the actual truth and reality of the situation. So when, when you're in that mode, if you do have that sort of identity as being a winning professional trader, this is probably the worst one to have. You won't take a loss or you're unlike, or you're less likely to take a loss when it's time to take a loss because to you being a winning professional trader means that you do not take losses. So you'll hold on to it, hoping and praying, knowing or having that belief that you can't be wrong. And if you can't be wrong, then you can't take a loss. So you're blocking yourself from doing the right thing. And now you're holding on to probably something that's just going to turn into a bigger loss fighting everything, you know, at, you know, you can have the best technical analysis, but if you don't listen to that or your risk management, you're quite literally blocked from that in that sort of a mind frame. So understand the way of the way that you're thinking about things and how that relates to your internal, you know, your internal dialogue. Okay. On to the second point, <laughs> patience. Why is patience so important? Patience is very important because and this really does run off the back of that stoicism belief. Patience is very, is very important because we want to see actual confirmations of things before imagining what's going to happen. One of the big things that I always repeat is I don't trade my opinion. I trade technical analysis. My opinion is wrong all the time. My opinion can be incredibly bullish, but if technical analysis tells me it's either not necessarily quite time or it's actually a time to be bearish, I will go with that no matter what my opinion is. Why? Because typically my opinion is just running out of patience. It wants to see something that is not there. I get impatient and I want to force a position. Also coming from that, you know, that, that belief of always wanting to be in a position, right? Fear of missing out essentially. A lot of the time you'll see something on your indicators if you're using technical analysis. Again, this is the frame that we're coming from. Um, you'll see something on your indicators that looks like it's about to turn bullish, for example. And without waiting for it to be fully confirmed, 
for that nail in the coffin type signal, if you run into that, you are quite literally not even playing out your tentacle analysis edge, which is, you know, whatever secret sauce indicator that you use. If you don't actually do that, you can't even play your tentacle analysis strategy properly because it's quite literally going against your criteria to begin with. So it's a false, it, it, it is a false experiment. It is, it is a false read. You're quite literally not going off of reality. Again, relating back to stoicism. So that patience with actually waiting for things to happen, waiting for them to be confirmed is so damn important because half the time people will see something that is almost there, they'll enter in and then immediately it'll go against them, right? Now, this is twofold, of course, because patience also just quite literally refers to having <laughs> having an understanding that more often than not, things are not, there's not like a big move to be made, right? Patience, you know, and in this, in this regard, that's kind of your defense against, you know, fear of missing out. Why do people enter into these trades thinking that a big breakout for a thousand percent or a big breakdown for a thousand percent is about to happen, you know, every, every day? <laughs> Um, well, it's because they don't, they, they don't have that underlying belief of patience. They don't, they don't, they can't step back and realize and look at the reality of the situation that breakouts and breakdowns, these big breakouts and breakdowns very rarely happen. Again, we can actually just very briefly go into the charts. Let me uh, bring a fresh chart up over here and let's, let, let's just, let's just show this. How, how often did we actually see a breakout in this past year, 2018? Bitcoin was essentially resting at the 6,000 level. For the whole year, it broke it 11 months into the year, 11 and a half months into the year, actually. Now, of course, there are some great trades right here, right here, right here. But if you're looking at the big bad trade, the one that I think a lot of people were looking for, that was, uh, assuming that they were bearish, that wasn't until 11 and a half months into the year. You literally got one trade for the whole year if you're coming from that mind frame. Now, of course, even if we were a little bit more lenient with it, picking tops, like literally getting perfect positions on tops, we would have had one, two, three, four, five, and then six uh, at the end of the year. Six potential trades for a year. That's one trade every two months. So understand that patience is not only necessary, but it's also the most realistic frame to be coming from. More often than not, nothing's happening. Very rarely, very, very rarely. Okay, and back into the back into our lovely little background over here. And the third, and just as important as everything else, I don't want to overshadow anything. They all work synergistically, although stoicism is what makes them all possible. And that is discipline with typically regards to risk management. Coming from that framework of stoicism, we want to be open to any changes, any new information that the market is giving us. When the market gives us a new signal, we want to take it readily. When it's actually confirmed, again, going to patients, again, relating all three of them together. When it comes, and this typically comes in the form of risk management, because what typically happens is you'll, you will have a position open, you'll, you might even have a stop loss in place, which you think which you think you are cool with. But really, what is going on there? What is going on? Well, a lot of the times, you won't actually accept that truly deep down inside you. You will be happy too if the position starts to go against you, move that back and further back and further back again. What is the actual skill what is the what is a tangible skill that keeps us from doing such very very destructive habits that is discipline sticking to your guns again this is this is kind of the glue that ties and really and really cements the other two into place because with discipline we can come from that frame of okay when i get that new signal i will take it stoicism is being able to see the signal Patience is, is being able to wait for the signal. Discipline is taking the signal. And we could also we could also relate this to responsibility. In fact, I think responsibility is even more is an, is an even more powerful word, word and something that means a little bit more to me as well. Um, in fact, I might even change this around to responsibility. Responsibility to take the right action at the right time after waiting for that right signal. 
So again, understand that these things are what make, they are the underlying foundation of what makes the psychological, uh, the, the, the psychological belief structure of a professional trader p even possible. Without these, it can't be done. Now you might relate them in different words. It, it might mean different things to different people. This is the way that I would like to relate it myself. This is what I found to work for myself best. And I hope this one finds you well. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.